Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, I review the Thypox Amera 28mm f1.4 a spherical lens for the Leica M mount. Introduced in 2023 at Photopia Hamburg, this lens um, is quite interesting because it comes with a um, quite ambitious optical design, all sorts of innovative features, and yet it aims for a competitive price point at on of only 760 euro. Um, for instance, it features an innovative focusing scale that uses these red dots here, depending on the selected aperture, to indicate what would be in focus in your frame. So especially nice for street shots and so on. And it also comes with a so-called soft stop at 0.7 meters in terms of close focusing to let rangefinder photographers know that they need to switch to the light view, uh, live view feature if they're using a digital camera or for film photographers like myself to let them know, okay, this is the close focusing stop that you should be using because this is how far your rangefinder goes and everything beyond that would be um, out of your control, so to speak. And then there's even one more feature that uh, lets you select between a traditional aperture, um, so regular clicks and regular stops, um, and a stepless aperture, which is really nice for videographers. So quite a package, and if we look at the competitive landscape here, it is a direct competitor to the Leica Sumilox um, 28 millimeters, which of course is significantly more expensive, coming in at around 7,000 euros. And then for a long time, we have nothing on the market. And then there is the Vogtländer Nocton F1.5 spherical that of course also features an spherical element. And then again, there are some other offerings um, coming from Vogtländer. Um, and then the only thing that Carl Zeiss has to offer here for 28 millimeter for the Leica M mount is an F 2.8 Biogon, of course, a legendary lens that also costs around 700 euros. So quite interesting from a Thypop perspective to place it right here for an interesting price given all the features and all the innovations that are being introduced. So of course I was curious, so I picked the lens up during a recent trip to Hong Kong. I'm shooting it on my vintage Leica M6 and um, two rolls of Ilford Delta 100 and one roll of Kodak Portra 160. And of course, I can't wait to share the results here with you, take a closer look at the lens, its build quality, the optical design, its features, and of course, most importantly, take a close look at the results it produces and some of my personal impressions. So let's dive in there and get a closer look at this lens. The 28mm Samara spherical lens comes with 11 elements in 7 groups, with 3 high refractive index glasses, 1 extra low dispersion glass and 1 spherical lens. The five groups towards the rear act as floating element, which supports the Samara's close focus performance. The 14 aperture blades can be set between f1.4 wide open and f16 when closed down. As mentioned before, there is a switch you can choose to um, set your aperture clicks regularly, so to speak. So you do get proper third stops until f8 and then um, full stops all the way down or you can switch to the stepless aperture, which is great for videography because it basically means that you can seamlessly transition from a lighter scene to a darker scene without your audience noticing. The lens is available in black and silver, and in this particular case, I went for the black one to match my vintage Leica M6 body. Um, overall, the 28mm Samara has a compact filter size of um, 49mm and a front diameter of 54mm with the rectangular lens hood attached. The manufacturing quality of the lens, the filter threads and all that is really, really nice and everything snuggles and clicks nicely into place, so it's really a joy using this lens. And interestingly, it only weighs 330 grams. You would expect a little bit more. So for comparison, it is um, 110 grams lighter than the Leica Sumilux alternative. 
Interestingly, there is this soft stop that I mentioned in the introduction at 0.7 meters, which is great for rangefinder focusing. It basically lets you know via that soft stop that this is the limit for rangefinder focusing and that you would then have to transition on a digital like an M-body to the live view feature or on any other mirrorless camera. Of course, you could just go and use it beyond that. Towards the other end of the focusing spectrum, there's an infinity lock, which is unusual for such a modern lens, um, but I appreciated it. And the most interesting and most innovative feature is, of course, the depth of field preview using the red dots here that are particularly visible on the silver version, but also still have enough contrast here on the black version. And it helps you get, an, get a feeling for what would be in focus with the chosen aperture. Um, in your frame um, and uh, in this particular case it particularly helped me shooting street shots but I can also imagine um, other shooting situations for instance portraits where it might come in handy. The lens hood is worth an extra few words. Um, it is made of lightweight aluminum and I particularly like the rectangular vintage design and the cutout on the upper left corner makes sure that you can still see enough of your scene when looking through the rangefinder and viewfinder window here, um, and despite the size of the lens. Naturally, a 28 millimeter lens uh, with an f1.4 aperture is quite large, and the typical problem would be a viewfinder blockage, and in this particular case, it was uh, solved um, nicely in market standards, I would say, and at least in my case, I didn't encounter much problems. <laughs> So what about the optical performance and the results? Um, looking at the ambitious optical design and the preview images I had seen online prior to using it, I had quite high um, expectations, to be honest, and those were not disappointed at all. Especially shooting at closer distances and at wider open apertures, I was really, really surprised to see the amazing bokeh that this lens produces, the fantastic transitions between the in-focus to out-of-focus areas. You do get a lot of character in your images. And of course, even the background elements like the light sources here, they get pleasing shapes and so on, all thanks to the 14 aperture blades and the quite ambitious optical design that this lens comes with. And you could really feel that it is optimized for close focusing um, situations with the floating elements. So in my case, shooting 0.7 meters and a bit beyond that, I could really, really feel that. And I can only imagine how nice it would work at 0.4 meters and so on. In general, um, the sharpness is, I would say, solid. It's not an outstanding sharpness, but really well pronounced in the center of the frame, even wide open. And once you stop down, um, I would say to f5.6 and especially f8, you get a sharpness across the entire frame. But what is interesting is that the sharpness in the center does not significantly improve. Sometimes you see that on some lenses, but here, basically wide open, it's almost the same in terms of center sharpness as uh, later on, so only towards the corners it improves. In my images, I had hardly any problems with vignetting. So sometimes when shooting wide open, you see these strong vignettes around the corners here. I didn't have that problem. So overall, really, really nice. Um, longitudinal chromatic aberrations and lateral chromatic aberrations are well controlled and can hardly be observed in the images. And as mentioned, the lens is not tack sharp, but really a solid performer. And I tried shooting it in all sorts of different situations because this is kind of what I expected from such a lens. The rationale being if you carry such a larger and heavier lens with an f1.4 widest open aperture, you want to use it. So I did shoot it at night and in darker situations and indoor situations. And here I felt that it just performed really, really well. And then during the day, 
um, stopping down a bit, um, shooting a Delta 100 film or so on, shooting some street scenes and street shots, it still performed surprisingly well. And even when I turned the corner and went into a darker alley where I suddenly needed um, the wider open aperture, so if I just wanted to um, have quicker shutter speeds and still slower film, it was really, really performing um, well. Um, so I, overall, I really, really appreciated the versatility that it, that it came with. And even with trickier issues, the lens performed well. So for instance, it is really resistant to flaring. Um, you can shoot directly into the sun and you have hardly any problems with flaring and ghosting, which of course, thinking of videography comes in handy because sometimes you just, when shooting video, you just want to um, pan somewhere and have the sun so as a source of light in there. And then, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. And also, of course, the rectangular lens shade that it comes with really helps ensure that you don't get unnecessary stray light into the lens. But even when shooting into the light source, it just worked perfectly fine. Um, color reproduction was really, really good and um, accurate, I would say. And to me, at least, the lens really, really shines when shooting black and white. Of course, depending on the film stock, but this combination of the pretty bokeh and the kind of feeling and character that the lens produces in combination with black and white film really surprised me. It is a nice modern look, but not overly corrected, if you know what I mean. Sometimes you feel like oh, something is sterile um, because it's just so perfect. In this case, this is not the case. It's not too sharp. It's not too uh, dead, so to speak, but instead you get a lot of character, a lot of feeling to the images and that combined with a nice black and white film stock is just producing fantastic results. So overall I was really impressed by the optical performance of this 28mm Samara lens. So what about the handling and my personal impressions? In my opinion, this lens bridges the errors and different use cases. So like I am, film photographers like myself get um, a familiar infinity lock feature. They also get a nice soft stop at 0.7 meters that provides orientation. I also have the innovative depth of field um, preview um, on the lens itself. And uh, last but not least, I. Um, get beautiful aperture clicks, which I just like hearing. And yet uh, digital photographers and M-body users and videographers would appreciate the stepless aperture that they can switch to and also a minimum focusing distance of 0.4 meters. And all of this is combined in this lens and is addressing the different audiences differently. And if you have both a digital and, and a M film body, um, then I think this is a fantastic lens when it comes to the versatility and all the different use cases that it can cater to. And as I've alluded to before, it is also nice to have these extra stops and be able to transition to indoor shooting and um, uh, darker situations without really switching film or upping your ISO and so on. Um, and to be honest, I was really surprised to see so much innovation coming from a new kid on the block instead of the more established players and then to also see it ex being executed um, to, uh, to such a high quality. Um, this really surprised me and in overall I would say the lens really comes with a premium feel, fantastic materials, um, it really feels nice to the touch. And um, I, I don't feel that there's any kind of compromise involved here, but instead it really comes as a nice package. The focusing tab feels fantastic and regular viewers of the channel know how important a good focusing tab is to me. Um, personally, I also didn't mind the infinity lock um, because for me it of course is a reminder um, to vintage or it's a nod to vintage lenses that also have that. Um, and of course I read some reviews online mentioning that and I get that it might be unusual and confusing or even irritating if you're not used to it. But if you're used to it like myself, then it's just a nice feature to have. 
The innovative depth of field um, indicator is neat. It took me some time to consciously use it, to be honest, in, in real life situations and using it for street shots and so on. And I also feel like on the silver version, it would be much more visible and more pronounced and maybe even a better reminder to use it. In my case, the black version, of course, it's also visible, um, but not as pronounced, which I personally like, but it has the downside of not being so visible in certain light, light conditions. Um, and, and here, of course, um, you might forget about it and not use it so much. What strikes me most about FIPOC is not just the push for innovation, um, but also that they really do their own thing. So if you look at all the carefully crafted details, like the typography here, this is really, really nice. And it's a FIPOC typography. It's not, not just another Leica copy, but instead they really try to bring in their own character and DNA and features and do their own thing. And that, despite all the competition on the market, they managed to introduce this really, really attractive package Overall, I would argue this is a great value proposition for the 760 euro that you would be paying. And whether to include this lens into your lens collection, in my opinion, comes down to um, your use cases and a couple of questions. So would you be using the wide open aperture a lot? Do you need that additional um, um, extra stops? And also then, of course, take the extra um, heft into consideration. Um, then, of course, it comes down how much close focusing distance cases do you have? Are you using a 28 millimeter for wide shots of landscapes and so on? Or do you really want to get closer to your subjects? Then uh, you really benefit in terms of performance from the floating elements and the um, ambitious and complex optical design of the lens. Um, do you want to use it for videography? Yes or no? Um, do you use it on a digital M body um, using the closer distances? And last but not least, um, do you appreciate the kind of modern um, but not overly um, sharp and overcorrected look and feel? Or do you prefer something more vintage and simpler? And depending on the answers to your questions, um, I can really see going for that lens and adding it to a lens collection. In my particular case, I already have 28 millimeter lenses for the Leica M mount and yet um, it nicely complements my lens collection because those are um, yeah, significantly slower, typically f5.6 um, or 6.3 lenses in the vintage case. Um, and here I have an f1.4 that I can deliberately pick up if I know, okay, I need that versatility tonight. I need to be able to transition from lighter to darker situations or I want to use it at night during a concert or, or um, a bar or wherever I go. And then this lens, of course, comes in really, really handy. So overall, a really, really nice lens that, in my opinion, should um, get a Leica and especially competitors like Folklander on their toes and a run for their money. Um, this is a great addition to the market, and I'm really happy to see such innovation coming from Thibok here. <laughs>